BC Squatchers here. I'm in Bunsen Lake Park. We're headed to the Poly Tri Chum Lookout. The hike along here is a Halvor London Trail. I'm here. I'll take about an hour. Do not hike alone. Be prepared for rapid changes in weather. Tell someone of your destination intended time of return. Don't get locked in. Note gate closing times. Today the great gate is open from 8 to 8. Take an accurate map and emergency precautions. It's Rich here from BC Squatchers. What am I doing in Bunsen Lake Park? Normally we're out there going to where it's nobody goes, where you have to bushwhack your trail. And yet today I'm following a very worn trail and there's lots of people on the path with dogs and it's a popular spot. And there's 600 parking spots here at Bunsen Lake Park. The park has bear and cougar. But today the reason I'm here is because a good friend of mine, who doesn't want to be named, but wants his story out there. He doesn't want to be on film, and he doesn't want to have his voice, but he wants his story told. So we're going to go discuss that and show you that. I'm going to be calling him Runner Man. Runner Man is a bit of an athlete. Runner Man has run ultra marathons, and he likes doing trail running. The particular day involved... It's September 7th, it's a Sunday, 2014, just last year, and there was a group of four of them running, uh, one lady and three men, all of them ultra marathoners, capable, experienced trail runners. My friend Runner Man, on that Sunday, running with a group of people, had the experience of having some rocks thrown at him. It may well have been Sasquatch oriented, and that's why BC Squatchers is involved. Furthermore, he had pine cones that were falling down from the trees as if either thrown or somehow knocked from the trees. It was quite, a, quite an incident and he called it weird. I would consider Runner Man a good friend. I've known him for over 10 years. This story only came to light because I happen to know him. He has reported to BFRO. There was a group of witnesses as, because they were running in a group, but as far as I know, no, none of them have reported it in any sense for a Sasquatch story. I did visit this site a couple days ago. That's why I'm cognizant of exactly where things have happened. I covered it with uh, Runner Man the other day. Runner Man, as an ultra marathoner, has run 50 mile races. He's very capable, and that's why going for a four hour run, as he did on Sunday, September 7th, was quite a natural thing to do and the other runners were capable of that also. It looks a little squatchy. Doesn't mean it wasn't natural causes, but there's something going on here. It looks squatchy to me. 
really does. Trilliums are a sign of a healthy environment. We've reached a location where a runner man had the experience of the rocks being thrown at him and the group of other runners. He was coming along the trail here. And somewhere about here, the first rock flew by. He said it whistled by, but it preceded him by about six to eight feet it was about fist size and he ended up taking refuge behind this rock here the other group who were just slightly behind him the other members of the group took refuge behind that tree and the rocks were coming from over that way over there there were a total of four of them when the first one went he said hey everyone duck there's someone from rocks and then the second thing they said is Hey, expletive, don't throw rocks at us, you're going to hurt somebody. But even after they yelled, made that yell, two more rocks came flying by for a total of four rocks. And he describes them as being about fist size, probably a little bigger than this. And um, a rock that, that is fist size would weigh about a pound. I did a quick calculation on that. So, is there anything squashy in this area? There's a couple things. I found it surprising that the tree over there has been busted. It's still green. It makes me wonder when it got busted. Right there. Right there, it makes me wonder when that got busted. But the rocks were being launched from over that way at an angle towards the trail over here. Large rocks that scared the group. Somewhere over there. Let's go take a look at that. This is the rock that a uh, runner man took refuge behind. And the rocks, the rocks were actually being launched from somewhere over here. But I couldn't see anybody, and they yelled out. There was no laughter, no noise. It wasn't like the prankster was having a good time during seeing them scramble. They didn't see anything. It could have been further up the hill here, but the rocks were coming down this way. After a moment, after about a minute, the four rocks had, had quit flying by and the group proceeded again with uh, Runner Man uh, taking the lead. <clears throat> and he was weary. He was keeping an eye, an eye open for, for what was happening over on, on this side of him. But instead of there being more rocks, it was in September when pine cones are nice and hard and they, they throw well because they're dense. There was pine cones were dropping out of the trees above them on both sides. And he described it as being very weird because you don't see that when you're running too often. And other members of the group saw it too. Pine cones falling down. And this isn't entirely unusual. I'd like to point out that Christopher Noel, with his YouTube channel, Impossible Visits, has had the experience of pine cones in early September when they're hard and dense being thrown so that they come down out of the trees and you get the feeling that the trees are shedding their pine cones even though it's the wrong time of year for that to exactly happen. I like to point out this very squatchy tree just in the area where the rocks are being thrown and subsequently the, uh, the pine cones. Here's the snap off here, then these grow out on the sides. 
the area where all this rock throwing had happened is only a couple hundred meters shy of the uh, Polly Trichum Lookout. Here we all are at the Polly Trichum Lookout. Look at this large tree here. So wedged in there. Didn't grow up this way, didn't just fall from here. I don't know where the source tree is. It's been there a while. These have grown up into it. Looks like almost like the heavy end is up higher. I look over here, see the way this is just shoved in place. That's very soft. Oh. I can't push that out of there. There's probably other squatchy things here. Runner Man and the group continued on. They didn't have any further issues running along the trail, except about a half hour after the Polytri Chum lookout, Runner Man injured his leg very seriously. He wasn't able to run very well. In fact, for him to proceed down, it was a hike from hell. It took four hours to get back to the parking lot. He had to lean heavily on one of the other male runner buddies and the other two of the members of the group uh, ventured away, leaving just the two of them. So runner man was headed down the trail, being supported by the other buddy. And in about this location, maybe just over here, they encountered a young fellow coming up the trail, hiking alone. It was between noon and one at the time. It was a nice day, but in September, you gotta be careful because the days are getting shorter. And the young fellow asked, runner man, how much further to the peak? And that kind of revealed that the young man wasn't familiar with the route. And that there isn't actually a peak. There's a there's a series of undulations. First, there's there's the lake district, and then further on, there's a series of undulations, and you can get beautiful views of the of the surrounding mountains and stuff. But that is considerably further than here. Runner man had to tell him, hey, there isn't really a peak, and you've still got a ways to go. And at that, they carried on down the trail, and the young man had to further up the trail this way. I'm here on a Sunday afternoon. Well, it's not Sunday afternoon. Well, it's, yeah, it's 12.20 right now. Not too many people around, even though the weather's nice. It's Mother's Day in May, maybe that explains it. But in September, would there be a lot more people? The people who venture up here are fit, strong individuals. But when you're hiking alone, you end up being alone. It took two hours for Runner Man and his assistant, supporting Buddy, to get down the mountain from here. Runner Man was convalescing for quite a while. 
He couldn't get out of bed, do things for a couple days. And then finally, after almost two weeks, he was able to get around to go to the local store just for something to do, to, to get out of the house, to, to have an opportunity. And that's when he saw the missing person sign. And as soon as he saw it, he knew the young man that he had bumped into that had asked him for directions for how much further it is up to the peak was a missing man in the photo there, Richard Lynn. Coquitlam Search and Rescue did con conduct the search, but it was already a couple weeks after he'd gone missing. The trail was rather cold, and they searched for a while, but Richard Lynn has never been found. A possible sighting near Bunsen Lake on September 7th, 2014, between noon and 1 p.m., resulted in Coquitlam SAR members searching the Halver London Trail from the Polly Tri Chum Lookout to El Paso Junction today. There could be much speculation on the fate of Richard Lynn. And nobody can say a Sasquatch did it or a cougar or a bear, because we have no evidence to suggest any of those things. There's a lot of ways to perish in the woods. <laughs>